What's going on, podcasters and YouTubers? This is Hav here, one of your hosts from the Real Fan Review, coming out of Long Island, New York. With me today, we got our man in the chair, Al. How's it going, everybody? We got my brother, your brother, B. What's up, everybody? Yeah, man, and no real news, man. I was, you know, I was telling the fellas, I was hoping to hear something from DC, something from uh, what's our guy from Guardians of the Galaxy, James Gunn? Yeah, keeps, James Gunn. Yeah, he keeps promising we're going to hear something. So maybe next week we'll be able to talk about DC movies coming out because <laughs> we got nothing this week. This week we're strictly talking yeah. about The Last of Us season two, season two, episode two. Uh, I'm hoping for a season two because this shit is spectacular. Uh, yeah. But yeah, we're going to talk about episode two of The Last of Us on HBO Max or HBO if you're watching it at normal time, you lucky bastards who don't have children. <laughs> uh, so <laughs> yeah, it's HBO Max for me uh, at like yeah. 11 o'clock at night. So let's get into this. And again, people, if you're listening to us, there's no way to just not do any spoilers. It's it's a, it's a TV show. It's, it's on every week and people mm-hmm. are talking about it all weekend. One hour or freaking Monday for sure. So listen, really quickly, episode Chef Kiss. Spectacular. <laughs> Amazing. Beautiful. Crazy. Yeah, man. That's that's this as as unspoilerish can we could get. So let's get right into <laughs> episode number two there. Brandon, talk to me, brother. What did you see? What did you like? Tell me what your thoughts are on, on episode two. You know, I I love, once again, it's just something that's really working for them, is being faithful in rendition to the game. Mm -hmm. So, like, this episode was basically the first few levels of the game, (laughs) you know? And, like, it's just, for it to be so reminiscent, little different here and there. Right. But for them to be sticking close to that... You know, I'm not finding it like, oh, it's a copycat. Like, I'm, I could just play the game. Right. It's now seeing the artistic rendition of the game. And it, it makes sense. It makes for a good movie. You know, and, I, and watching last night's episode, it made me think about Resident Evil, you know? Oh, yeah. And how I, I did enjoy the first Resident Evil movie. But after that, you know, I was kind of hoping they would introduce characters in a way that the story followed similar to the mm-hmm. games and you know they they brought in nemesis and things like that but nothing ever felt like it was the resident evil game it never me, felt like resident know? evil no yeah, yeah like it just never got there like even the first game i mean the first movie was its own thing had nothing to do with any of the games mm-hmm. i liked what they did with it but i wanted to see that 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 mansion you know like i wanted mm-hmm. resident evil 1 i wanted the mansion yeah. and so i thought about what Resident Evil did versus what The Last of Us is doing, and I'm just I'm saying to myself, I wish Resident Evil did something like this. Absolutely, I mean, I, I, it's funny you say that because every time I watch the show, the first thing that comes that comes to my mind is, "Fuck, they did Resident Evil wrong." <laughs> so, <laughs> it's just crazy. Yeah, it, it's it, it's like perfectly made for someone to say. We should do Resident Evil. This is awesome. <laughs> yeah. Alvin, like. Even with the remake of Resident Evil that they just made, you know, they yeah, they went to the mansion and yeah, they did Raccoon City, right. but it wasn't not there. Well done, nah. you know? And yeah. so like it's just like if you gave me a Resident Evil movie and they were at the mansion and the movie was the mansion and the storytelling was good. Right. Yeah, I got you, man. Al, talk to me, man. Mm-hmm. What was your thoughts about the episode? What do you think and, and feel about this one? Um, it actually made me enjoy the fact that I didn't keep playing the game right. because I was able to get exposed to everything for the first time. I wasn't looking for what I'm sure a lot of people are looking for, like, oh, how did this come from the game? Right. How did they bring this over? You know, because from what I'm hearing, everything is almost in step from the game, mm-hmm. except for where, because it's a movie, they have to add to it or take away or do different to make it make sense because it's a show. Um, so I'm enjoying this. Um, you know, mm-hmm. th- this episode, we had another loss that I don't, I, I appreciated the fact that I wasn't expecting it. Me too. So it, yeah. it made, you know, the, the impact was a lot more because I wasn't expecting it. So, and, you know, just the acting job alone, the way 
from what I understand, they're staying true. The clicker got introduced exactly the way it is in the game from what I hear. Mm -hmm. And I think it helps that I think the guy who either wrote or created the game. He's a co-writer. Was involved in this episode. Yeah. yeah. So he was able to, you yeah. know. And it helps to detract from all those people that, you know, all these showrunners that have been saying, well, we would need to, you know, modernize the games or bring the stories in line with present time. And this is showing them, no, if you stay true to the story that made the game a success or the um, source material a success, and then just adapt the little nuanced parts for TV or for a movie, you can have a great success and bring in the fan base that was already there. Plus use the fact that it seems realistic to bring in a new fan base and this is yeah. showing that it's possible. Yeah, man. I, I completely agree with you. And, and I also think a part of me feels the same way that you do, which is I'm kind of glad I didn't play the game yet. Because my understanding is they did take some liberties with some of the scenes in there. But apparently everybody who's played the game who now sees this show is saying that they agree with the changes that they made. Um, I personally don't know the changes. So to me, I'm just watching it as is. And it's perfect. It's it's amazing. And and from what I'm hearing, the 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 switch that they made at the ending with the whether with the zombies or whatever they're called there, uh opposed to the the military that's in, in the game there. It's it's honestly it was just it played off so great. I was so like into it and and I couldn't believe what I was watching and it was amazing. So I think that this show is really doing something for me, man. I I, I really am enjoying watching this show. Uh, let's, let's start from the beginning of this, because just like the first episode, we had a, like a prologue or like a, before it all went down kind of thing. And to be honest with you guys, I think this prologue was more impactful than that first one. And it's basically taking place in Jakarta as, as this, I guess the military is finding out that this is happening or, or realize it's happening. And I got to tell you, that opening was so real. <laughs> dude, there I, is... I felt terrible. <laughs> dude, I have never seen the scientists make the military person look scared. Like, <laughs> <laughs> that was so awesome and amazing. Uh, so let's get into that part there. So, Al, when you got a chance to watch this prologue, again, it's, it's them... Pretty much, it's not them, it's the military for Jakarta there going to a diner to look for a scientist. And this scientist specializes in, is it, zoo, not zoology, it, was it macology or? Yeah, mycology, yeah, so the study Mycolo of fungus, 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 fungus yeah. Yeah. yeah, and so so they get the scientist and the scientist is like, did I do something wrong? They're like, of course not, you know, and, uh, <laughs> you know, we, they bring her to whatever military zone or or secret base and tell me what you thought about that whole opening scene there Al. like well it was definitely funny because that woman was you could tell intimidated like she's in the car mm -hmm. she's like did i commit a crime like right it's like she's trying to find out why the fuck she's in this car <laughs> you know they took her away from <laughs> breakfast they didn't even let her finish her food and it's, right. you know, and it's military showing up. So she's like, all right, I'm either under arrest. I did something. What's up? And they're like, nope, nope. They keep it quiet. Like even when they get into where she's got to look at the, I guess the body, um, the other the scientist is like trying to give her like background. Okay. This is what you're going to look at. And the guy's like, nope, let her figure it out. <laughs> like I want her yeah. So let her see. You could. <laughs> yeah. So from the beginning, this woman is already intimidated. She has no idea what's going on. And then when she realizes what's going on, like you see her face, like there's no hope. Like she's given up. And like it's funny, like you said, uh -huh. like that guy's looking at her for hope. And she has to respond with the one solution she knows is, is going to be necessary. And for right. that, to, and, and it's interesting that it comes from the scientist because usually in movies, you know, it's the scientist that's like, oh no, we can right. find an answer. We can find a cure. And she's just straight looks at him and says, there's no cure. There's no medicine. There's no vaccine. Palm the shit. <laughs> just let me go home with my yeah. family. She's like, take me home. Yeah, take me home because start bombing, as the okay? Tear, <laughs> as the tears start rolling down her eyes, take me home so I can spend the last moments with my family, dude. 
Uh, I mean, it, that was insane. I mean, Brandon, when when she looks at the the military guys, and she's like, "So where are the other uh, fourteen people?" And he's like, "Missing." <laughs> <laughs> right? And she 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 starts shaking. You see the cup and the yeah. And again, for the scientists to now say, "Bomb it." And bomb us like yo, I have never seen the scientists say to to destroy the the neighborhood or the 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 community the the city or they're always the yeah. ones against it. And dude, when they go mm-hmm. back to his face, he's like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what do you think, B? Dude, what was that? How did that scene take you? I I have to remember that this is a show sometimes. Because watching that prologue, I'm wa- I felt mm-hmm. like I was watching a documentary about like the downfall of the United States, like yes. how the world got real. ruined, and it was too real. <laughs> you know, it's just because like the real. way Al met, like the way Al said it was just like this lady was just having breakfast, like no nothing crazy. There's nothing right. crazy going on. It's just the revelation of like, hey, we're fucked. Like, I'm sorry, <laughs> I studied this my entire life. And now that you're telling me that this is what's happening, I'm going to tell you there's no stopping it. Mm-hmm. And, like, I had to sit back. I'm like, oh, my God. Like, if this were to actually happen, like, yeah. fuck. Like, you know, and I have to say this episode, this opening alone has made me want to rewatch both episodes and see if there are more things that I catch on to. Right. Um, because, like, in episode one, you get the radio talking about Jakarta, mm-hmm. how there's something happening in Jakarta, there's something going on. And in this episode, they mentioned how um, it was happening at a flower plant. And mm-hmm. she said, oh, that's a perfect, like, sub-gate, sub for it. Substrate, yeah, for, substrate it. for it. And, yeah. and then I was watching some videos. I was passing through TikTok, and people were, like, kind of digesting all of the information. Mm-hmm. And if you go back to episode one, they didn't have pancakes, which you need flour to make. Right, mm-hmm. they were making biscuits. The girl didn't have the biscuits. Cookies. The girl didn't have the the raisin cookies. Then he forgot to buy the cake. All things that had flour in them, and so mm-hmm. like it's just like those little those little breadcrumbs mm-hmm. of things that like if you're not the eagle eyed viewer, you're not gonna catch it. And so to see like this started because of flour. This is where it's went. So now I watch this episode and I'm like, what else can I catch? What else can I see? So, like, the moment mm-hmm. that Ellie was eating the sandwich, mm-hmm. right? It's made out of bread, which is made out of flour. And so, like, that alone should have been the cue that she's immune. Right. Because she was eating a sandwich. You know? So, like, I was trying to catch all these things, and now I want to <laughs> watch even more. Yeah. And, like, that oh, that that prologue alone just, just set everything for me yeah. for the whole episode. That, that fucking yeah. prologue made me drop my cupcake. <laughs> I, was, I was sitting there eating a hostess orange cupcake and it was like the fucking flour I was like drip <laughs> yeah I was getting my fat boy on at 11 o'clock people watching uh, Last okay. of Us <laughs> yeah but yo, know, B I'm glad you brought that scene up because that scene with the sandwich I know it was meant to show the disparity between she was being treated well and they were like barely eating to survive but it also mm-hmm. kind of yeah I like I'm like, wait a minute. If this guy had to ask his um for his drug bag back because there's no bags being made anymore because the world f- collapsed, who the fuck right. is making bread? <laughs> for her to have a sandwich. I'm like <laughs> if it was bread like, oh, chicken, it, it, still it, looked like it. it looked like Chick-fil-A, son. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, not a sponsor, not a sponsor. Chick Fil A, not a sponsor. <laughs> but uh, yeah, man, that 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 opening scene was absolutely insane. And then we get to Joel, Tess, and Ellie on their path, and you can see that Joel is still. He's like, you know, dude, if she twitches, <laughs> I'm putting one in. Her. I'm pulling the trigger. I'm putting one in. Her. <laughs> And the funniest thing is she, the, the freaking Ellie has the personality of Al. He was like, ah, ah, ah. <laughs> she was doing the, she was acting like she was turning and she's like, Tess was like, stop it. He'll shoot you. Don't like, <laughs> he, he will fuck you up. <laughs> Not oh, even me. Man. He will fuck you up. 
And it's funny because you could see how, I mean, and uh, granted, they just found out that she's kind of somewhat immune. This they still don't really believe it just yet, Al. They they no, really I, don't believe it yet. Yeah, well, imagine you've gone. To, what was it? I think it's been 20, well, twenty years, twenty years, right? right? So twenty yeah. years, you don't know of any kind of cure. Everybody's told you no cure, no no vaccine, no way around this. You get this, you're dead. And now here you are seeing somebody for the first time who supposedly can survive it. You can, you know, you're gonna have mm. for them a sense of disbelief. Like, no, there's no way. You know, for twenty years, anybody that got it died. So I can I can see them having that hesitation of, you know, not wanting to believe that there's a possibility. Mm not wanting to have yeah. that hope it just to have it you know prove that not to be true so um you know i can imagine it being hard for them to take after 20 years but it also made me remember this is the only life she, this girl's known because she's only 14 so she you know i was like you know she's acting stupid considering what's going on but it's all she knows She's right. not adapting to really anything. Is. This is her life, you know? So it makes sense that she's still, you know, acting a fool given what's going on because it's all she knows. Mm -hmm. So, and, and in this scene as well, we see that the fact that they're kind of stuck in a position, well, really more Joel than, than Tess. Joel's trying to figure out whether they should just hightail it back before this girl turns or keep moving forward. And Tess is in the, in the belief camp here. Where she's saying, you know what? It doesn't matter if we move forward or not. They still got to give us what we need, and we got to bring her there anyway, right? We go back, there's nothing, you know. Yeah. And she she probably gets killed because she's gonna, make, you know, make those meters turn red. Uh, so they make the decision to go forward and keep going to the next military zone, or the not the military zone, but the next uh, connection with the fireflies wow. there. And B, I want to go to you on this one because I feel like again, I'm coming from someone who never played the game to someone who's played the game. There's a couple of scenes as they're walking out and you're seeing the visuals of what the world looks like. And I couldn't help but think, like, this looks like a video game. Yeah, uh, I would say, to be honest, like, this looked very much like the video game. They The video game is, is really detailed in how they pursue the landscapes how they do every level design like it's intricate and looks exactly like this so the video the the show has done a really great job of portraying what the world looked like from the view of the video game but also even building upon it like that scene where they saw the cordyceps the whole gang of them um laying on the floor with each other mm -hmm. like that wasn't taken from the game per se, but that visual mm -hmm. is something that you would, I felt like I would see in the game, you know, and right. I feel like they really represented that scene very well. Yeah, man. And I, and I'm pretty sure there's a lot of scenes in this, in this episode alone that just felt very, very video game. It's like, there's a scene where Ellie's like standing there and Joel walks in the background and just like perfectly shot the scenes of the towers leaning on each other with the grass and, and overgrown, you know, I guess you could say plant life is is there. Um, when they go into the, I guess it's the state building, is it? No, they don't go to a state building first. They go into another, they go to a hotel room. A hotel. A hotel. That hotel, man, yeah. I'm like, I'm looking at it and I'm like, would I cross that goddamn water? Like, <laughs> and, you, <laughs> and you realize like they've been there before right now because it just seems like they just knew where to go, what to do kind of thing, having conversations yeah. about what's happened in the past. And I think even there, they were having this conversation, or right before they went into the, the hotel, they had a conversation of, you know, Joe's killed a, a few of these things. It's like, it's known that Joe has handled some business with these little zombies or things. Yeah, with the clickers and everything, yeah. Right, they even hinted at the clickers, right? Because she was saying mm -hmm. like, oh, what some, I think Joel was saying that some of them die off within days and there's some that, some that have lived for more than five years. And 20 and years, And I think yeah, they kind of hinted at something them. like that. Yeah. Right? So kind of crazy, yeah. man. Um, what do you think about the whole hotel thing there? I think we that's our first opportunity that we got to see really Joel and Ellie kind of like have a conversation and bond a little bit or talk about their themselves or the past yeah it, it felt, kind of felt like like you're saying character development we were getting stories background 
um, mm -hmm. information on the characters that and dialogue like you would normally see in a cutscene on a game, you know, and mm -hmm. and even later when they go up and the and you have Ellie have to go up by herself. Um, it felt like one of those side missions in a game where you switch from the main person to the side character and you're now controlling the side character crawl and so forth. So it felt right. like that. <laughs> so in that sense, it was like, wow, this feels like I'm watching a real live cutscene from the game. But um, yeah, right. like, but it also makes you realize how dire, like, like you said, like I wouldn't have wanted to walk in that water, but if you feel like your whole life depends on getting through it, you know, you're going right. to go, you're going to do what you have to. And that's the state that they're all in. Yeah, man. And then they get to, uh, Tess opens up a door for the hotel room to, she got to, you know, walk past this, I guess it was like a crumbled hallway or whatever. And she's just like, you could tell that something's wrong. And Joel's like, what? And they bring her to like a balcony and out of this balcony, all you see is a bunch of these zombie like creatures all laying on the floor. And it was so weird and freaky because at first I thought they were all dead. But then as the sun came or was shining on them, they would move and do all this crazy stuff. B, what do you think of all those zombies out there in the, on, on, out in the streets? I thought that was crazy. I, I thought that scene was like beautifully shot because right? it's deceiving. <laughs> you know, you see them on the floor and you're like, oh, are they like hurting? You know, like what, what the hell's going on? And then you see like when one hears a little something, they all move a little bit. You know, and I was like, oh, that shit's <laughs> freaky. Like, that was real freaky. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's a, and it's a great even the setup explanation for later. of the tendrils. Yeah. Right. Oh, that was a huge, like, payoff. Like, I didn't, I, I knew it was going to pay off, but I didn't know when, because there was that little hint that, that oh, there's an underground system of, of, of the cordyceps there where if you step on one, it'll let someone know miles away and they'll all come running. And you're like, oh, okay. You know, we might see that this episode or in the future kind of thing. And I thought it was like something they would have to step on or do, but it wasn't that. So we'll, we'll get to that later on. Um, when I saw all those zombies, I'm like, there's no fucking way they're going that way. So like, it's like, there's no way I'm going that way. They're not going that way either. Um, and they said that there's a different way to go through. And they go to a museum. And it's so crazy cool how they do this museum. I mean, I'm, I'm assuming this is shot for shot in, in the game that there's, there's something similar to this where you go into a museum, Brandon. Really similar, yeah. Yeah, very similar. And I again, this all felt like a video game to me. Like, it really did. And I, and I could only assume that it's just as cool or creepy as you are playing in the game that it was for me watching. And I think actually watching it, it made me feel more like it was a horror movie that I was watching. And it was so crazy. <laughs> you know, because they hear the sound and like, what the hell is that? And then all of a sudden, you see this thing walking towards them. And I'm like, what the hell is that? And you hear the, and that's perfect. <laughs> really, tell me about it, B. That design was perfect. Like, yeah, that is exactly what they were supposed to look like. And so, like, mm -hmm. it's not one of those like weird off takes. Like, you know, like, oh, you know, I see what they were going for. No, no, that's take for take the picture of the clicker. Like, <laughs> right. <laughs> And how about the movement and the way they walked around and everything? That was that was great, too. Like, just the whole, like, you know, just they're moving their body because they're listening. They're yeah. all about listening, you know. And so they can't see anything. Everything revolves off of this of the, the hearing. Right. And so that whole scene was just really, really well done. All right. And how about for yourself, man? I mean, this is the first time you're seeing these things because you didn't play this far in the game. How was your feelings with no. watching this part? I thought it was a pretty great way of introducing these characters that they had so far been terrified of. You know, we'd been hearing about and seeing them from a distance, you know, and then when you hear the sound, like you said, it felt like a horror movie because you see the fear, mm -hmm. you hear, you know, like you said, up until now, they've been painting um, Joel as this badass, you know, everybody's scared of him and he got right. terrified. You know, I think what he said to him, <laughs> at, from this point on, we're not, we're silent, not quiet, silent. Like silent. he was like, <laughs> <laughs> so it made you wonder like, what the fuck's coming if he's terrified, you know? Right. And then you see him get quiet and you hear the noise. And then mm -hmm. like, like you, I was watching it at night with my headphones on. So like, I hear it coming from one side, then from another. 
mm-hmm. and you hear it getting louder, meaning they're getting closer. So right. the way they played that scene out was great in building up the final reveal of what these guys look like. And yeah, it was, man. you know, and, and the and, fact and, that, mm-hmm. and no, and the fact that, you know, it also shows that they need a headshot to kill them because the fungus was basically yeah. taking everything. Yeah, man. I, I I really thought we were gonna lose both of I thought we were gonna lose Tess and Ellie in this one. I was like, oh well, <laughs> this show's over. <laughs> this shit is this show's <laughs> over because these things look crazy and they were fast and moving around. I'm like, how do they walk anywhere without being heard? Like this is crazy. And 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 you know what? Even before we saw the clickers, them walking over the dead bodies of the of this infected group of people, like that was just crazy and like detailed and and the walls have the cordyceps all over it and everything like that like that's just just wow you know like i absolutely loved seeing all of that man and Mm -hmm. um you know they do get out of there but we hear ellie go oh you know um i think i got bit and she's like well lucky it was just me not you guys you know kind of (laughs) like it's kind of crazy that she got bit but did you guys see her get bit i didn't see that no i didn't see it either Right, which yeah. also leads to us not seeing somebody else get bit. <laughs> well, you know that scene was crazy because that clicker just fucking booked it after her. So I was like, "God damn!" Yeah. <laughs> so we kind of missed that whole thing, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Al, did, did you see Tess get bit at any point? No, I didn't get. I didn't see her get bit. But then again, remember she leaves, and after a while, we focus on Joel and Ellie. Um. So I'm guessing that's when true. she went off, that's when she got bit. Because then when she does come mm-hmm. back into the picture, you know, she's um, favoring that arm. You know, I think mm-hmm. there was like, you can see blood on her neck, but we're supposed to assume it's from the fight. Um, but, right. you know, that's her, probably it's, and it probably, you know, I'm assuming now that's her blood from when she got bit. So, you know, gotcha. the one thing I like about this show is like B was saying, if you go back and watch the episodes again, you'll see all the little hints that they're giving you along the way of everything that's happening. Yeah. I mean, listen, I knew something was not that I knew something was up. I I, I thought it was a little weird in the moment. Cause again, I don't know what's happening. I'm trying to take in the information as I'm receiving it. I'm like, Tess is really pulling for Ellie right now. And I'm like, what is, what's up? I mean, like I, I get the hope. I said, maybe they did some things in the past that they really, really regret. And this is their way of like, getting uh, what's what's the right word here i'm looking for but like basically to redo what they did wrong almost like to wrong yeah, their to right the wrong that like they've that, done yeah. Yeah, yeah you know what i mean like they're they're making up for what the, they've done and she kind of hints at that too Al, right she's like kind of saying like you know joel i need you to keep moving forward and, and get you know yeah. your what's the, what the hell is the word i'm looking for was it retribution too good ret- is it retribution Restitution? No, no, no. I don't I'll know. It's a, it's a R word for sure, but <laughs> I'll do something like that. We find out. <laughs> yeah, you know, you feel like they're really trying their best to kind of like just make up for these bad decisions or rough things that they've done in the past and stuff. So it's like, all right, man, I get it, man. But uh, they're walking along, and she's like on Joel's ass, like, 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 don't you give up? Like, you know, like. Come on, don't you want to believe in something and everything? And he's like, yo, we got to go back. And then we get this scene where they, <laughs> I think it's like towards the final end of the scene where they, you know, they're walking to where the, the the firefly should be. And they see the truck, truck's empty. There's somebody that's dead on the side. It's all messed up. And, you know, they go inside to this building to find out what the hell's really going on. And everyone's pretty much dead and they're all fucked up. But what what did Joel say he thought he saw there out? Was it that it looks like one of them was turning and they didn't win? Oh, yeah, that um, it looked like one got bit and was turning and the other started to fight it and everybody lost. Yeah, kind of crazy, man. <laughs> but, the, mm-hmm. you know, and again, this is where this switch is from real life to the game, right, B? Yeah, this scene comes right from the game in a, in a different way, but... So tell me, Close. Well, before we, we go over what really happened, B, tell us what happens in the game opposed to what we saw in, in on the TV show. In the game, we actually, they get Fedra soldiers are mm-hmm. there. And the Fedra soldiers mm-hmm. um, assume that Tess is infected 
based on how she's moving. I, I don't think she actually, I, I think she was bit. I don't know if she was or not. I don't remember, but mm-hmm. they assume she was infected. And so the Fedra soldiers who we haven't met, they're not Firefly. The Fedra mm-hmm. are like our bad ones. Well, supposedly mm-hmm. bad ones. Right. Um, and they actually like, they get into a whole thing with, with Joel, Tess and Ellie. And so the building does explode. Um, so they do kind of do the same fashion um, of the yeah. explosion thing. But Tess gets killed by Fedra and not the uh, the infected. Gotcha. So now, B, seeing the way that this played out in the TV show, did it play out better for you, or does it is it did it no different? It's just good. It's still good. I, honestly, I think it plays out better because in the game, you know, and when you're playing a game, things can happen, and you know, mm-hmm. hopefully, that down the line, that it's going to get explained why we feel this way about something but when you have a 10 episode series you know you don't have 36 hours to to get all that information to play the side missions to get all this stuff so you have 10 episodes so i think it was actually a really great choice to not make it fedra because we don't really know a lot about fedra no not at all you know we don't we don't get anything yet so to make it the infected and the whole thing with the with the kiss with the with the the, (laughs) You know, coming out, I think that was a way better move because of the storytelling that we could do off of it. Gotcha, man. Yeah. And then, Al, what we get also in this scene is the that whole concept of the cordyceps being able to speak to each other from a mile away or distances away, right? Yeah. And we see the little vine going over the dead person there or the person that was infected. And all those people that we saw, all those infected that were laying on the floor all start to get up and start running dude tell me mm-hmm. your thoughts <laughs> <laughs> yeah that was hysterical it kind of reminded me of like the walking dead at that point you know because right. they were all just running and they weren't the slow methodical zombie type character no, they were just sir. all bawling it and then he sees them running and coming and he says all right they're coming and she's i think tess says how many and he's like all of them. <laughs> so, you know, they start having, you know, running. And again, it just leads to, and I like the fact that it's that vine network and not the spores, you know, because right. it makes it, it adds to not only do they have to be quiet, they have to watch where they're walking, where they're stepping. And it just mm. shows how scary and dangerous this world that they live in is because if you step out of a quarantine zone almost anything could kill you at this point you know so yeah it just amplified and like b was saying i like the fact that they made um the situation of that scene not involve fedra because it will build to why joel eventually i'm assuming would is wanting to fight and come up with this cure because it keeps taking everybody he knows and loves. Right. So, you know, and then watching that <coughs> play out that that way, like I said, it, it added to that scene and the impact of what comes later. Yeah, definitely, man. And then, um, you know, even before the, uh, the cordyceps there, you know, Vine gets the other infected people to start running over to the, where these guys are now, where Ellie, Joel, and Tess are. You know, that's where Ellie kind of figures out in the argument of they should go back and not. Ellie looks over. She goes, oh, shit, she was bitten. And then look back at her with the camera. And I'm like, oh, shit. And then she knows she's like, show me. And she pulls it to the side. You can see the bite in there. And she's like, you know, I don't got that much longer. And I'm like, oh, man, we're losing another character. Like, who's left, kid? Like, we just met these people, you know? <laughs> this is episode two. We lost the two, 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 we lost two good main characters already. Um, yeah. it, it's, it was kind of crazy, man. And, and, and then I saw that she was going to sacrifice herself. You see her putting down the either the fuel or the, the, the definitely flammable water or flammable. <laughs> was it gasoline? It was pink. I don't know. It looked like it looked gasoline. Like gasoline. Yeah. Looked like- right? I, I thought the smart I got that flammable water. <laughs> <laughs> I thought the smart thing would have been to grab up all the ammunition before you know she did all that, but uh, I guess there was no time. I thought probably. that's why they were looking at the hand grenades. 
Me too. I didn't know they were to drop them all. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of crazy, man. And then, um, you know, as yeah. as they realize what's happening, and of course, you know, you guys already said that Joel saw all of them coming. Um, he didn't want to leave Tess, and you can see that there's definitely something there. And in, in a matter of two episodes, you could see the way that Joel cares about Tess and Tess cares about Joel. And you can see that that Tess really wants Joel to save Ellie and to save himself by saving Ellie. You know, she says to him is to make up for all the things that we've done, all the all the bad stuff that we've done. And it, mm-hmm. I can't help but wanting to know what have they done in these past few years? You know, I can yeah. I can only imagine because of the way that she wrote it and the way she said it. You know, it's kind of crazy, man. I, I really am interested in more more information than I'm hoping we see more prologues like we did in the first two episodes here so far. Um, mm-hmm. You know, the, the the zombies or the infected come into the building. The Joel and Ellie kind of get out of the way. Um, <laughs> the, the, the lighter trope in every movie, every TV show where they can't do it, you know, yeah. it's kind of crazy, but it, it played well, right? <laughs> <laughs> I could only hope so. Yeah, I'm waiting for the episode where the car doesn't start. Oh God, Al, the car doesn't start. <laughs> Dude, I so, just, I just mad she took that kiss like that. She was like, ah. Yo, dude, there was something beautiful, ugly, and disgusting about that whole thing. <laughs> that kiss. It's dude, like she let I love it happen, how he just but I wonder. Over, <laughs> and he was like, oh. Oh. He's like, wait, wait, wait. Oh. And you see the freaking things coming out of his mouth. Oh God, that was so sick. Now, now here's my question to you guys, and B, you go first on this one, man. Is the like she kind of let it happen, and but he also like the monsters were walking past her at first. The kid, it's not like they didn't see her or couldn't smell her or whatever. Mm. Is it because you think because she was starting to turn already? I think that's what it was. Like, you know, I think it was just another, I think it was just the, the whole cordyceps thing. Like, I mm. feel like that's part of it. Like, she couldn't just resist the urge because they're now in a network, you know? Because mm-hmm. um, I was like, she doesn't need to buy time. They're all running past her. So, like, she don't have to buy any time. She got plenty. <laughs> right. And how about for you? What's your thoughts on that? Because, again, she just kind of, like, stayed there. And a part of me was like, can she not do the lighter or does she not want to do the lighter? And the fact that the way she just let that kiss kind of happen or that we don't want to say kiss because it was not romantic. It was fucking ugly. Uh, <laughs> but she but she legitly just stayed there and let it happen. Well, I think two things. One, she was in shock at first, you know, as they started all storming in. You know, she I, I took it that maybe mm-hmm. she semi froze. Mm-hmm. Um, but at the same time, remember, she was trying to wait for as many of them to come in as she as she can let come in so she can get the right. most of them at the at the same time. So I think she was trying to stay quiet, let them all come in as for as long as she could. And then it was weird. It was like, I don't know if as she kept turning, the guy eventually sensed her and sensed. Right. I wonder if he could sense the turning. And then that kiss was their way of finishing it off. Right. Like to finish helping her turn faster and so forth. Because otherwise, yeah, but what the hell was that about? Like, that made no sense. So I'm wondering if that was yeah. their way of finishing, like, hold on, you're, you're turning, but let's turn you faster. And that's what that was going to be you. about until she finally, you know, like you said, the trope. Oh, finally, the mat, the lighter all of a sudden works. And she was able to, you know, blow the room up. But. Yeah, that was it was weird that they didn't hear her, see her, or anything up until that guy saw her. Right. And B, yeah. is that that guy, I mean, I'm, I'm sure he's not a specific character, but he was kind of in between the infected and the 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 clickers. Yeah. So is um Yeah, go for it. Go ahead. Oh no, I didn't know what you were asking. So no, I was gonna say like like again, I I, I keep reiterating that I, I I didn't see the I didn't play the game, but I'm assuming there's more monsters than just the inter- the the in, the infected there and also the clickers. Yeah. Um. So it you know it's it's the same kind of 
infection that comes in stages. And so just like Tess, right? She started shaking her hands and, you mm-hmm. know, this and that. So this is, she still looks human. And so the the whole infection comes in stages. So it doesn't take over automatically. Like becoming the clicker takes time. Right. Um, and just like Joel said, like, it doesn't happen to everybody, but it takes time. And there are things past the clickers, too. <laughs> oh, man. It's, you said things. So plural. There's more than just one thing. There's going to be a few things. There, there are going to be a few things. <laughs> oh, a few things. Okay. Because I, I'm, I'm wondering, like, are we, have, we seen them, have we seen it all as far as, the, like, the, the, these things that are out there? But I'm, I'm curious to see what else is out there, like. You know, I, I don't know. I, I just I'm so excited to see what's what's going to happen next, because this the pretty much the episode ends with them. You know, Joel, Ellie pretty much are going to be together from here on out to go moving forward in the story. And honestly, I, I can't even imagine where we go from here besides, you know, well, well we saw the trailer for the third one. Uh, the trailer for the third one is like <laughs> they're going to find an old friend that needs help and they're going to stay there Bill, and, and, and fight us. Bill and Frank. Dylan and Frank. Bill and Frank, yeah. Bill and From the Frank. radio. The ones that, I was just going to say, they're the ones with the radio station playing the music, right? Yep. Oh, wow. All right. So we're going to meet them next week so and, and hear their story. Hopefully that that the the prologue would be their story so we can see how they first met up or whatever. But uh, listen, those, those prologues so far have been fire. I have loved yeah. the start of both episodes, and I hope they continue on with these different things that they're doing in the beginning part of the episodes. Um, yeah. I mean, B, any expectations for the future after seeing these first two episodes? I don't know. I mean, they they are faithful to a lot of the game, mm-hmm. but uh, I like you guys mentioned earlier. Um, the I believe the director of the game is heavily involved in the show as well, mm-hmm. and he actually came out and said, "Listen, I understand you're going to be mad at some of the changes that are made in the show or decisions made in the show, but he's like." I made those decisions based on things that I thought made more sense. He goes, I actually kind of wish we did this in the game. Right. And how about for you, Al? What's your expectations now? I mean, these first two episodes have been absolutely incredible. I almost feel like they can't keep this up. This is going to be amazing (laughs) if they keep this up. Yeah. Well, the, the funny thing is, because it's based on a game, the game constantly has action throughout it. You know, there's no... Mm -hmm filler episode in a game so if they can stretch out the events of the game throughout the show every episode hopefully you know i'm I'm predicting i'm hoping is going to be like this mm-hmm. where there's so much that they can squeeze in because i think gameplay is usually what like several hours and you're right. you're basically going to have that for this show so you can realistically play out that same great story in this show and not have to do a filler you know, so we don't need to have the one episode that gives us the background to Joel because we're kind of getting that through little glimpses of the story as we play it. So I'm hoping mm-hmm. for and I'm, I'm anticipating really good quality episodes like the, the two we've gotten already. Yeah, same here, man. Looking forward to episode three there. It's been a great show. It's it's I just I can't even imagine it continuing to be this great, but. I got my fingers crossed. You know, House of House of the Dragon was just like that, where the first episode was fantastic, and then the second episode was good, third episode was great, fourth, fifth, it kept just getting better and better, and by the end of it, we were all in love with the damn show. So it feels like this is another banger that's <laughs> out for this year, man. So 2023, off to a good start with the TV shows, hopefully with the movies. Please. We got our fingers <laughs> crossed for movies. We're going to be the real TV review soon. Like, <laughs> so I'm hoping that the movies come. I mean, we got some good movies coming out in February, and uh, which leads us to next week's episode. Man, next week's episode, we're going to definitely talk about Last of Us, episode three. And we're also going to give you guys the movies for February. What movies we're expecting to love besides Ant-Man and the Wasp, Quantumania. Uh, we're going to see all the <laughs> movies that come out because we got Magic Mike. Part three. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> hey, they got a couple of good movies out there, man. So listen, come back to us next week. Again, we're going to talk about the movies of the next month there, February 2023. And we're going to go ahead and give you guys a review for The Last of Us Episode 3. So listen, that's going to be us for tonight. Uh, 
Again, we thank you guys. If you are not a subscriber or you don't have us save as a playlist option on your podcast app, please hit the plus symbol on the playlist. If you're listening to us on or watching us on YouTube, hit the subscribe button. So every time we put out an episode, you'll be up to date on that episode. So saying good night tonight is my brother B. Adios, everybody. And uh, our man in the chair, Al. Have a good night, everybody. Yeah, myself, I'm saying good night. Again, thank you for watching and listening. We'll see you guys on the next podcast. Until next time.